sodium sulfate batteries. The sodium sulfate batteries are any other types of extremely interesting device. It are used uh, in different applications, even if nowadays the most interesting are basically the guided missiles uh, uh, in, and so that basically means that we are only interesting, even if theoretically we can exploit both the existence of primary and secondary battery, since these types of batteries are used often for the most in order to um, allow the working of guided missiles as primary battery. But what is the principle on which sodium sulfate batteries works? Well, sodium sulfate battery works due to the presence of a negative electrode that is acting as a cathode, as an anode during discharges, obviously, that is composed of uh, molten sodium and uh, a cathode, a positive uh, electrode, that is composed of a carbon sponge completely impregnated with sulfur. So basically, these types of batteries is extremely interesting so it's working at high temperature and is characterized with a lot of different important advantages. For instance, the sodium sulfate batteries is characterized with a nine specific energy and also a nine specific power, with a really important efficiency in the rechargeability. And so this means that we have a long life and even it's quite cheap, since sodium and sulfur are not really expensive materials, are quite abundant and cheap. And so we have a lot of advantages that can make these interesting batteries extremely suitable. So, repeating, we have a high specific energy and this is also connected to the weight of the battery. Since basically the battery is lighter because sodium, for instance, is light atoms we can say that obviously the specific energy, the energy over the weight, it would be higher. So this ratio, it would be higher with respect, for instance, a lead acid that is really heavy. Then we have also a nine specific power. So we're not only able to store a lot of energy for a unit of kilos, but we can even supply this energy really fast. And so we can even say that the total output voltage is comparable in terms of cell voltage with the one of a lead acid battery. It's also in this case, we are around a DDP having two volts as a final output voltage. And this is also due to the fact that we are using sodium, cause sodium uh, thinking about the similar reactions of reduction is uh, uh, characterized with a reduction potential that is very low, around minus 2.7. We will see this uh, in a moment. But these are really, really strong, uh, basically reducing agents. And for the reason is extremely interesting for electrolytic, electrochemical applications in the buildings of batteries. But so we have also some the uh, fact that the materials are cheap, so no expensive materials, and basically the possibility to have rechargeabilities and so secondary battery. But together with the most important advantages, we have even some problems. For instance, we have the fact that this battery works only in a temperature range that is between 300 and 350 in order to make sodium useful for the workings of the battery, it should be melted and we will see how a higher temperature is also important in order to increase the conductivity of sodium plus within the solid electrolyte used for the generations of this battery. And we have even an eye corrosive behavior. And of course this behavior of what? Of the sodium polysulfate that are created due to the product of this reaction. So when the reaction is proceeding we are creating sodium polysulfate and this sodium polysulfate are quite corrosive and so the high corrosive behavior together with the high temperature make these types of battery more suitable only for stationary application. 
even if from a theoretical point of view we can in the future even uh, imagine to use some of this battery for instance in order to st uh, start vehicles and so on but in general our use nowadays or as primary batteries in guided missiles or only in stationary application so now from a practical point of view we can say that as always as each single battery the sodium sulfur the sodium sulfate is a, uh, batteries is a molten salt batteries it is composed of a negative electrode this is sodium that is completely melted so is in the liquid state not in the solid one since the operating conditions are involving a temperature that is in this range then we have on the positive electrode a carbon sponge that is completely impregnated with sulfur and obviously we have the external circuit and we have inside an electrolyte that is a solid electrolyte it is a beta aluminum electrolyte so, so uh, that is known as BASE beta aluminum solid electrolyte and this is a sort of ceramics materials and uh, is uh, extremely important because it's solid it's able to separate these two electrodes in order to avoid self-discharging self but at the same time is able to vehiculate with its well-precise porous conductive structure the vehiculation of sodium plus from the anode to the cathode during discharging why? because the melted, solid, the melted um, sodium during discharging it's passing from this state to this one releasing one electrode that is collected on the cathode and this but this it should be able to vehiculate um, inside the electrolyte and reach the cathode in order to close the circuit but it's quite obvious that since we are dealing with the presence of sodium that is in the melted state the use of a liquid electrolyte does not make sense and so what we can do is use a solid electrolyte that can act at the same time that something is able to separate something that is solid and then an electrode composed as impregnated carbon sponge impregnated with sulfur and so the only way is to use a solid electrolyte that at the same time is also able to vehiculate these cations and in particular the beta aluminum sodium electrolyte could, can do that so base stay for beta alumina solid electrolyte so we know that this reaction is associated with a specific reduction potential that is quite low this is a huge reducing agent reasons for which the final DDP of the cell is close to 2 volts and the uh, electrical device having a quite high power density and the ability to create an interesting output voltage and then we have the reduction of sulfur for instance we can balance this uh, um, reaction And we have the formations of polysulfate that are corrosive reasons for which we have this problem in the use of these batteries in the not stationary application. This is quite corrosive. But basically, the final total reaction is this one. And is associated with the final output voltage, a total DDP, the difference between this reduction potential and this one, that is equal to 2 volts. So basically this is actually how it's able to work these steps of 
uh, battery. And it's interesting to see that these temperatures are not only interesting in order to ensure the um, melting of sodium and make this battery feasible, but it's also important in order to increase the conductivity of uh, sodium 2 plus inside the base electrolyte. Other interesting aspects concerning these types of batteries are the problem connected with the moisture and the humidity. Because we know that since we are dealing with sodium, even if this is extremely interesting due to the fact that this is a really strong reducing agent, it is really lighter with respect to other types of atoms, is cheap and abundant and so on, we have a lot of important problems concerning the reactions with water, since we know how much reactive is an alkaline metal, as in the case of lithium ion and the contact with water can release energy and cause even explosion.